systematizing the problems associated with this car turned out to be unexpectedly difficult. We are not inclined to idealize cars, but the second generation Ford Cougar resisted for a very long time before we managed to dig up any compromising evidence on it. Perhaps the car is still too fresh? Usually, by the age of five, almost every car has already formed a whole loop of typical shortcomings and the most common malfunctions. Internet forums in unison gave out only one typical jam on this model. It turned out that a five-year service life, which is exactly the age of the most elderly cars from our test subjects today, is not indicative of Ford's age. After reading a fair amount of reviews, you understand that the crossover has outlived the diseases of the first generation and is generally made quite well. Good looking on the outside, modern and solid on the inside. However, among its main advantages, both owners and specialists indicate excellent driving performance, as well as the reliability and reliability of the main units. It's even difficult to single out anything as a leader here, so let's go in order, noting the nuances that you should keep in mind when buying this car. Moving on to the details, let's start with the diesel engine, the thrust of which is enough under any conditions. The manufacturer offered a choice of two versions of the TDCI motor of different power, 140 and 163 horsepower. Both at this stage do not cause problems, with the exception of troubles provoked by frankly unusable fuel. As for the petrol engines, 1.6 EcoBoost and aspirated 2.5 liters, they will not disappoint either. 1.6 liter engine, having two versions, 150 and 182 horsepower boasts the same torque of 240 newton meters for both which is quite enough for tolerable dynamics the turbo engine by the way today is almost as reliable as the older atmospheric 2.5 in terms of reliability it was offered only for versions with front wheel drive perhaps the problems will start later we also cannot recommend any one of the two transmissions offered both six speed Mechanics and automatic work reliably and have not yet reached the age when you should listen and smell the process of their activities. Off-road, regardless of the type of drive, both work fine in the context of, of course, the limited capabilities of the crossover in this area. And the Kuga all-wheel drive system, in addition to routine control, does not require attention to itself yet. Do not say anything reprehensible about the body. Of course, its size does not suit everyone but even many owners of 10-year-old crossovers still cannot complain about corrosion or even a slight bloom of iron. And this despite the fact that the paintwork of the Kuga is quite thin and easily injured. And there are no complaints at all about the interior trim. Both fabric and leather behave with dignity. Questions cause only some moments of ergonomics and functionality of the equipment. But where certainly there will be no complaints, so it is in handling. There are questions about setting up the electric amplifier too much synthetics in the near zero zone but with more severe deflection there is organic and correct feedback on the steering wheel and the wheels respond to commands accurately and quickly balanced suspension settings help you get the most out of your ride here in comfort in speed of reactions to road conditions since we are talking about the suspension it will not be out of place to say a few warm words about it an important advantage of the chassis is durability the most frequent replacement stabilizer struts after 60 to 80,000 kilometers. Other details on occasion go up to 200,000 kilometers. This is the resource of ball, silent blocks of levers, thrust bearings and the pillows themselves, shock absorbers. However, the silent blocks of the rear, multi-link, last up to three years on average, regardless of the mileage. After that, the fasteners of the rear transverse levers, with the help of which the toe-in is adjusted, can become boiled. Needs regular lubrication. By the way, Running gear repairs are expensive, many components change along with the levers. And as for that single jam, since we mentioned it, we must lay it out to the end. This is the so-called braid, a plastic overlay above the license plate, which is on the fifth door. With its corners, it rubs against the body and, with a guarantee, wipes two full-fledged gullies to the metal. The recipe for prevention is simple, remove the braid and chop off the corners with the file. And finally, now there are no cars without electronic glitches. Kuga is no exception. It's somehow better with electrics, sometimes the headlight control unit suffers, but inconsistencies in various electronic protocols often come out. This can manifest itself in the incomprehensible behavior of the radio, the alarm lights that come on, the illogical operation of the heating of mirrors and seats. But, as you already understood, for the second generation Ford Kuga, 
this is already mere trifles. They will not spoil the impression of the car. Suspension. Structurally, the chassis of the Kuga is similar to the platform Focus, but not interchangeable. Both axles have anti-roll bars. An important advantage of the chassis is durability. Steering tips can easily last more than 100,000 kilometers, and steering rods can move twice as much. Transmission. The work of the AKP cannot be called swift, but claims against it are rare. Perhaps this is the best of the budget six-speed boxes created by the Americans in this century. They also do not complain about breakdowns of the MCP, unless the selection of gear ratios. The first gear in the manual gearbox can be made longer, while the second one can be significantly shortened. Engine. In terms of power and fuel consumption, both gasoline engines, 1.6 EcoBoost and 2.5, are almost identical. However, in terms of reliability and maintenance costs, the old aspirated with distributed injection will probably in the near future bypass the newfangled 1.6-liter turbo engine with direct fuel injection.